Well, hello and welcome to a, another uh, installment of Pastor's Devotional Bible Study Series. This is day one in a six-day series, uh, so you might be watching this on Monday. It's going to be released on a Monday morning. And last week, I was sharing with you that during my renewal leave, I had planned on reading uh, a significant amount of uh, St. Teresa of Avila. And, and so last week's uh, devotional was really inspired by her work in prayer. The other author that I was planning to read a lot of um, during my renewal leave is uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, and so this week's um, devotionals are really inspired by his work, uh, because though I'm, I'm not going to be able to read as much as I wanted, I uh, did pick up uh, some of that literature and have been reading that as well. And just a little bit of background. So Bonhoeffer, I think World War II, um, Nazi Germany. Um, he is a Nazi detractor, um, so he's a Christian. Um, and he speaks out against Hitler and the Nazis and he's eventually he's um, uh, imprisoned in a concentration camp and he's killed uh, towards the end of the war. Uh, Bonhoeffer was a professor, he was a pastor, he was a theologian, he was a prophet, he was a, a writer. And really the reason why I wanted to read more of Bonhoeffer is because he had this this ability to speak truth to power um, and uh, was really a voice of reformation and has been a voice of reformation for generations now, speaking truth to power. And I was thinking about, um, you know, the world in which we live and uh, the politics in the world in which we live. I was thinking about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. I was thinking about the pandemic and how the pandemic has um, uh, affected some populations much greater than other populations. Um, I'm I, thinking about um, uh, upcoming um, uh, elections and the political season um, and just th this idea um, uh, about speaking truth to power. I'm thinking about the denominational divide that uh, we are going through as a denomination and, and how to grow this sense in my own ministry of speaking truth to power. And so I said, let me just read more Bonhoeffer. I'd read quite a bit in my life, but let me just read more. Um, and then it got me to thinking about different passages in the Bible where we see Jesus speaking truth to power. So we're going to be looking at some of those this week. The first one um, maybe is the most uh, um, uh, the most famous in terms of Jesus speaking truth to power, and that's a passage that we call the cleansing of the temple. And it's in multiple places. I'm going to read it from the Gospel of John. Um, so uh, Gospel of John, chapter 2. Verse 13, Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Jesus is angry, makes whips of cords and starts snapping them. And you can just hear the, the sound of that. If you've ever heard the sound of that, it, it's terrifying. And, and you just know if it, if it were to hit you, how, how bad that would hurt. Um, and he chases these people out. Now, now, a little exegesis or a little tearing apart, looking inside of the text, what's happening here. The money changers, so let me cover that real quickly. Um, it was uh, unlawful to give money. to. Or, so graven images were unlawful in the Jewish world. Uh, and the money that was in circulation in Jerusalem was Roman currency at this time because Rome uh, governed Israel. 
Um, and so the, the money that you gave at the temple had the face of Caesar on it. Well, it's a graven image. You can't give. It's sinful to have a graven image, according to Judaism. So you certainly can't give that as your offering. And so conveniently, there were money changers outside of the temple who would take your Roman coins and they would give you Hebrew money in return that did not have the graven images on it. Here's the catch. You brought your $50 worth of Roman coins to make your, your offering of $50. I mean, that, that was a lot of money. You were, you were making quite a sacrifice to do that. And the money changers gave you $5 worth of Hebrew money. And so you got shortchanged. And what truly got shortchanged was your ability to give an offering to God. You had saved up $50 and your offering only ended up to be five. And of course, those money changers who had the power were walking away with all of your money. Same sort of thing was happening with the animals and, and especially the doves. So uh, an important part of temple religion was animal sacrifice. And if you had traveled days and days, you can't bring your animal with you. Um, and so oftentimes people would travel days and days to get to the temple and they would be making their, their offering. They would be making their sacrifice. And people make sacrifices for all sorts of things. Our, our loved one dies and, and we're making a, a, a burnt offering sacrifice sacrifice to God. We had a child born and we're making an offering. We, we're going on a big trip and we're making an offering. I'm about to get married and I'm making an offering. All sorts of reasons. Every, every great sort of uh, monumental place in life, you made this burnt offering. It was the center of life. And if you didn't have an animal, then when you got to the temple, conveniently, there were people there to sell you an animal. Now, and they'll sell you this little dove. So then you can take the dove in and you can uh, do the burnt offering to God. Um, now, at home, this dove would cost a dollar. But here, they got a special deal for you in the temple courts where this dove cost $25. Now, you might make it to temple once or twice in your entire life if you live far outside of Jerusalem and you have to walk a week's time in order to make it to the temple. And so you have to perform the sacrifice. So you have to buy that dove at the steeply inflated price in order to make that offering. And again, you were cheated by the temple leaders, by the people outside the temple gates. And so how is it that Jesus speaks truth to power? Well, I think the challenge here is that what Jesus is angry about is that there are people who, by religion, are gaining power. People who are taking advantage of religion to gain power for themselves. People who are using religion to gain power. Now, look at any religious system around the world, and that has happened a lot. But also look at the vast majority of religious systems uh, around the world, including Christianity. And what they would all suggest is that the truly religious are the ones who give their power up to God and to others. Right? Jesus, he didn't go around amassing power. Remember his temptation 40 days in, in the desert? And, and uh, the tempter says, you can have it all. All of those kingdoms, you can have it all. Jesus wasn't interested in gaining power, in amassing power for himself. He would say, I forgive you for your sins. Be healed, go. And he was constantly giving power. And so, so speaking truth to power in this circumstance is calling out when anyone or any body seeks to gain power for themselves by using religion. Specifically, Christianity would say, all the power belongs to God, and any power that we have ought to be given unto the least of these. 
We go to the back of the line so that they can go to the front. We wash their feet so that they might be found whole before God. So speak truth to power. Where do you see people, institutions, organizations gaining power by their youth use of Christianity? When you see that, speak the truth there. And the truth is that they're going down the wrong road if they're truly followers of Jesus. God bless.